Healing from the Other Side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Listen, they're all around you, close as a thought or a memory. Messages of Hope. Hi, everybody. It's Hi, one everybody. of my favorite shows to do where we are doing live Q and A's, a few phone calls, not too many. My fl phone gets flooded, but we will take some phone calls after answering a few questions that people have sent in over the years. We're still getting through them. And who are these we that I'm talking about? <laughs> Why, it's my lovely assistants, Hi. Lynette Seth Gorn and Bev Garlip in the order they show up there on the screen. We were all just sitting here for the last 10, 15 minutes, just chatting and and talking about the wonder and the awe of being able to connect across the veil. And I didn't bring this up. Uh, I don't think Bev knows this yet, but I did a reading in person today. And I like to play the sign game where I ask my guide, Brenda, to tell me something that Lynette is doing, a current event so that I know I'm tuned in and ready to go. And this morning, Brenda held up a finger like this. And without needing to say anything, I just knew she meant Lynette had a cut on her right index finger, that specific. And Miss Lynette, Yes, I had a cut on my, that, that actually has been bothering me and it's tiny and I sent you a picture. It's did. just a little shallow thing, but it's it's kind of, I don't know, it just it has been bugging me. So Brenda's got her spy balls on and she's watching. <laughs> so, so affirming. And I shared that with my clients. It was a mother and daughter who came in person. It was so unusual to do one in person here. And uh, I I like to chat a little at first so that people, we build a little connection and they feel comfortable. And I was showing them, I said, look, my guide is here. She says, I'm ready to work. I'm tuned in. And she even showed me this. And here's my my assistant, my friend Lynette's picture of the cut on her finger that she told me about. And they, they just kind of look at you with these big eyes like, really? <laughs> and, the, and the reading was just so affirming, filled with evidence and very, very touching, very touching. So are you two ready to fire some questions at me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have asked my team of guides, Sanaya, to be here with me, and they are the ones that will be doing most of the answering the questions. I'll tune in because I may think I have the answers, but not necessarily. We see a lot of you, several hundred of you already joining us. So the three of us are just really grateful that you're here to join us today. So we'll go probably about an hour and you can type some questions in the chat. If you're joining us live, it's April 20th between four o'clock and five o'clock Eastern time in the U.S. So welcome from all over the world. Bev, why don't we start with you? Oh, oh, that's right. I was, we put out there that the theme today was going to be gratitude. And I don't want to answer a whole hour's worth of questions about gratitude. But I understand from our host, mindbodyspirit.fm, that we're celebrating gratitude this month. And they asked us to do something with that this month. So we'll honor that with the first few questions on that theme. So, Beth. Okay. It, it, it seems like everything is surrounded with gratitude that, that we're doing here. Um, Actually, the, the first question I, I brought up is um, an, an anonymous asker, and they wonder, what does our aura actually reflect? And, and gratitude might be part of that. Does, does it reflect our vibration, our, our energy, our health? What, when people see our aura, what, what is it telling them? The answer to that, answer and, I, to and that. I do feel that I know what the answer is, but I'll just tune in as I answer it is yes to all of the above. Um, Bev, I'm going to mute you while I talk because I do hear a little feedback there. Okay. So yes to all of the above. It, it reflects your, and it's not reflecting like in the sense of a mirror. It's displaying, revealing your current state and your overall state of consciousness. So if you're radiating anger it would be red like i i had a spirit show me in a reading that i did just uh, two days ago red radiating all over it for anger that could also indicate health which in that case would be likely inflammation so different colors will show state of health state of consciousness meaning happy sad whatever is going on so it can it fluctuates so it's going to be 
in the moment, but there will also be an overall throughout your lifetime frequency. I call this our ringtone. Every one of us has our unique frequency that people who can see ours can right away just tell what your vibe is. And, you know, we don't need to see auras. I generally don't see them to feel that ringtone when we meet people, right? You either click with them or you don't. Have either one of you ever seen an aura? Yeah, Lynette? I Tell have, us about yeah. That. You both yeah. have? Yeah. Did you see colors? Because I've, oh, I remember seeing one really white, just big white light radiating off someone. And I was turned to the person next to me and said, do you see that? And they didn't see it. What did you guys see? Go ahead, Dev. Oh, actually, I've I've seen white when you're in chat doing channeling, Suzanne. Oh, no kidding. Um, white no kidding. Uh, white around you, and I didn't um, know that. You know, I, I mean, I other people I, see it. <laughs> I play games like, wait, is it from that reflect? Is it from a window? And and it's not. You know, it's it's wow. right there, and it it moves with you, cool. and. Um, a couple times I've seen some some colors around people, but not not normally. I, I don't see that often. Okay. How about you, Lynette? Yeah, I was reading a book by Father Greg Boyle. It's called Tattoos on the Heart. And I was just really in this open heart space. And uh, I was driving down Route 66 in Tulsa and rounded a corner. And there was a man just walking down the street with kind of a wheelie thing in front of him. And behind him was this huge yellow light just like trailing behind him it was crazy so i was also going to a spirit fair that week and i practiced i'd watched celestine prophecy which tells you how to see auras to start with your fingers and um, i went to the spirit fair and softened my eyes you know softened my gaze kind of looked out of the and there were people just like with pinks and greens and white and then now i don't see them anymore so <laughs> but i did see i did see at a sanaya session in your house when you were in the villages there was gold light shooting out of your your sleeves and like this gold light coming up around your head oh give me goosebumps yeah. well, there they yeah. are first goosebumps <laughs> of the program <laughs> how many minutes in <laughs> it didn't take long very very cool i would like to ask spirit to give all of us this experience yeah. i'd like to have it i'm sure everybody watching many of you i could tell you like i want to share my experience i wish you could <laughs> but uh maybe we just ask spirit to give us that experience it'd be very yeah. very cool all right great lynette question please yes i have a question um suzanne you say that we are all light what is within that light if the answer is everything then what is everything what is within the light that we are? Yes. And say that again, if the answer is everything, what if is that everything? If the answer is that everything is within the light that we are, then what okay. exactly is everything? Oh, wow. There's a deep question. Mm -hmm. So understand that light is a metaphor and that it's really talking about consciousness, awareness, which is, we think of that as a mental thing. It's actually a state of being aware and aware of what? Existence itself. So the light of awareness is the very foundation of every one of us. It's what we share. And it, it, it flows through all experience. It, it's what gives experience its reality. So without being tuned into channeling right now, it's really hard to put it into more words than that, but definitely this light that we are extends to all creation you it's it, this world appears solid but it's not that's the illusory part of this world to us it absolutely is solid that's the relativity but we are both solid physical beings and the light of awareness and that's why when these physical bodies die our awareness does not die it continues on eternally because we are part of the eternal light wow good Yay. stuff I like that. Let, <laughs> let me put the phone number to call up here. I'm only going to put it up once because this program will go into a video that stays. Let me put it up right now. It's going to stay on YouTube. And I'm not going to say it for the podcast people because it'll be too late to call in then. So if you are watching this program on April 20th, 2023, between 4 o'clock Eastern and 5 o'clock Eastern, you can call in live and have a chance 
that I will answer the call. But if it's after that, it will go nowhere. It's going to go into the ether. So save your dime. Boy, did I just date myself with that one, right? A dime. Who remembers when you could make a phone on a phone call for a dime? I called long and I talked long enough that we actually have a caller. So <laughs> my caller, you're in Columbia, South Hi. Carolina. You got through. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. That's a miracle. That's all I can say. It's this a miracle. morning I had a message from God will guide me. I mean, I'm trying to connect with my sister. Oh. Well, lost. well, I can tell you right away, we get in this habit of using the word, I lost my loved one, and we don't lose them at all. If you're looking for an online reading, unfortunately, I not I mean live on the air. I just don't do well, that. We call those well, I can understand yeah, that. yeah. Because you know why? Yes, it, this is an important teaching point for everybody. It's not an right. excuse. Number there's right. several reasons. I I depend on evidence from those across the veil, and they need right. to tell me things that are absolutely verifiable. I could sit here and just tell you, oh, I sense your sister and she loves you very much, and that would not be coming from a true feeling of sensing her presence. That comes from what I, I know is true. But right. the other thing is I teach people that we do a little shift to a, a state of consciousness. It's alpha state. It's a brainwave right. state that all of us can learn to get into. And right now I can guarantee you I'm not in alpha. <laughs> I'm in crazy okay. beta state as I interact right. with my girlfriends here. But is there anything I can answer for you beyond connecting you with your sister? No, just that, you know, it's a wonderful thing. I never expected that I'd get to talk to you today. I've been following you for, you know, you're doing great work and God bless you. And today's message in the morning when I got God is going to guide me. Huh. Um, I mean, I did not expect this is by chance. I was watching TV. I mean, I am, uh, you know, I didn't get the notification. I guess I did not just put the bell, but you're yeah. doing great work and god bless you suzanne oh thank you, you. what is your first you name know. what's your first name my name is shafia 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 okay well i can yes. tell you that as we're talking i do have an image of a, like a, a a tube coming from the abdomen of what you know like an image of your sister going to you as if you're like twins like i don't know how close you were but it's that kind of connection is what i feel that this image is showing me so whoever is showing that to me uh I don't know that it's your sister, but I, that image is very clear and very unusual. And that's the thing we look for. What stands out from something we would have thought of. And so yeah. just know that that close bond that you share with her continues eternally. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. You. God, God bless you. God bless you. you. Very nice, this wonderful work. Okay. Thank well, you for calling. Good. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Susan. You're Bye. welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. There we go. Okay, so why don't we do a couple more questions from my girls here, and then I'll take more calls because the phone is now ringing off the hook, but y'all can stop dialing for now, and I'll answer after two more questions. So, Beth, let's go to you. Okay, here's one I think uh, many people watching or, or listening can identify with. Um, I'm so excited about the things I've learned. I want to tell my sons of, of this love of connecting to the other side, but I'm concerned they're going to think mom has really lost it. How should any of us approach or not approach loved ones with our excitement about our beliefs? Oh, I love that. Um and I forgot we're supposed to be talking about gratitude, but you're right, Bev, you said it earlier. We just have so much gratitude about all this work. So this it's just woven through everything we do. It's what, by the way, did all of you know that, that thoughts of gratitude that you feel in your heart will bring you instantly into a state that makes it easier to connect across the veil. So really helpful. So how do you share with someone you love that you're really into this? Well, she all this, this person already has a sense that it might not be well received but is that our own personal fear what has helped me from the start is evidence so find some what we call no other explanation stories we call them noes like people talk about their ndes near death experiences and obes out of body experience find some noes 
things that go beyond what anybody could say, oh, that's mere coincidence that has happened to you or that you've read about and you want to share and give them something to talk about. So then just share one NOE with somebody to the point where then you can talk about it with them and now you can feel them out. If they come back and say, well, that's total BS, which is our term for belief system, right? That's total BS. Then you know, okay, they're not ready for this now. And you know what? That's totally okay. All of us just, we change as we go throughout our journey or not, right? Some of us have some people that, that we know that there's, well, are just dead set in their ways and they're never going to believe this. Uh, I love that the evidence is what has made my husband, a retired Navy captain, a total believer in this because you can't deny story after story, account after account, personal experience after personal experience. He personally had the experience of his daughter, Susan's two fingers on his arm, pulling him aside when he was thinking about her on a trail. That kind of thing changes people's lives. So share your no other explanation moments with somebody from an open heart without any fear. Test how they feel. If they're not into it, okay. Know what you know. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. And then find somebody else who's more open to it. There are plenty of us out here. Yay. Good question. Lynette. Yes. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity since I am in my niece's house in Florida and she is in hospice care now to ask this next question. I am a hospice nurse. One thing that upsets families of the dying is terminal restlessness. When the dying patient is trying to crawl out of the bed, taking their clothes off, cannot settle down or looks terrified. Can you please ask Sanaya what exactly is going on with these souls? And as I'm reading that, I'm also reminded of Brenda's last days and what that was like. So this could be really helpful. Oh, wow. Yeah. And as you say that, I can feel my guides stepping in and they're giving me two words, labor pains, labor pains. It's, uh, yeah, we think of oof, goosebumps. Thank you. We think of, of death as an end and it is. It's the ending of one physical incarnation, but to the soul, it's the birth back or to a new chapter, back to a state they came from, all of us, but the start of now further growth without a body. And so uh, labor into this body for our mothers was challenging and caused some writhing and dis lots of discomfort, I'm sure. And they say it's the same in reverse, that there's quite an attachment to the body. It's, it's uh, energetic, but the soul goes willingly. It's the human aspect, the ego that sometimes hangs on, but not to worry that the soul is always whole, always complete, always fine. And that loving beings, loved ones who have passed before, and those in the higher realms, guides and angels are just waiting to receive that soul as it emerges from this experience. Wow. What an answer. That's yeah, that's really beautiful. And I'm reminded that that last day that Brenda was alive when she was so agitated in the morning, she was still popping in on you on the trail. I mean, what we were seeing was in no way related to what was actually happening with her true essence. She was fine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I know I have somebody on the line. Just stand by. I wanted to grab your call, but we're just finishing up a little conversation here. Oops, we lost Lynette. I hope she comes back. But uh, she was talking about our friend Brenda, who we mentioned earlier, who I thought she had passed because there I was hiking. I knew she was near the end of her, her life. And next thing you know, she's talking to me on the trail. And she had not yet passed, but she didn't open her eyes again. And Lynette was with her and knew that uh, she could not have possibly known at a physical level that she was talking with me, but her soul sure was. And she hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, we love hearing from her. All right, let me see if I can change positions for you guys. There we go. That's I have you back the way you were. So I have somebody on the line here. I didn't see where you're calling from, but what is your first name? Hi, my name is Peggy. <laughs> Well, hey, Peggy, you are live on the air with a lot of people listening. <laughs> what a treat. It is a treat. I hope, I hope we can answer a question for you. 
um, I am eternally grateful for all that unfolds. And I seek endlessly for an interpretation of the passing of a person in my life 24 years ago who died in an avalanche at the prime of his life. And I, as much as I feel him and I'm interested in understanding what inspired him to transition. Do you know, this is where we need to realize we are all both human and souls and some things come down to our, our awareness here from the soul level, but many times they don't. But when we know that because we are this light of consciousness that I talked about earlier, we have the ability to shift our awareness to the higher level and try to see from a higher perspective, how were lives touched by that person in your life at that time? And how has, how did their being in this world bring more love into this world? And how did it affect everybody else's path around them? Did it provide greater opportunities for their spiritual growth, for yours, for example? I'm thinking of my stepdaughter struck and killed by lightning, six months pregnant. You know, you think, why would her soul choose that? I know her soul knew about it from a, a dream visit she gave us just before she passed. But to this point now, we know she's touched millions of lives with her passing. Not everybody needs to do that. If they if they help one other human being to find the light within as a result of their passing to the soul, that's a beautiful thing. Whether they're in a body or not in a body, all is well. It's hard to imagine that my journey towards understanding the light was the inspiration, but perhaps. And here you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you are, you know, asking these deeper questions. When we find love as the answer to that, to every question, the deeper questions that love really is the answer. Am I bringing into this world as much love as that person brought to me and more? Then we start to, to, to make the connections in our hearts, with our minds, that really changed the trajectory of our life. So I hope that that your questioning ultimately brings you to that awareness, but I hope you'll also go into the silence and use my sip of the divine meditation that you can find online under the yeah. title, No More Meditation Excuses, and start asking that loved one to make their presence known to you. That's how my whole journey unfolded. I just knew my Susan couldn't be dead and gone or lost. I knew she still existed. And so I sat every day and said, Susan, show yourself to me. Let me hear from you. And that seemed ridiculous to me at, at a time in my life when I had never meditated, never seen a spirit in my life. And with, with the commitment that I wasn't going to stop till I heard from her, look what's unfolded. So don't think that that just happens to special people. We're all special and you can do that too. Yes, I know that yeah. really, really well. Thank you cool. for all that you do. I really appreciate it. And I didn't know it then, 24 years ago, mm -hmm. but I do know it now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, there you Okay. So that's just one little ripple. And that's what we all are. We're just sending out the ripples. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Okay. Beautiful. Bev, how about one from somebody who's watching right now? We have a really large number of people. I, lo I love that you all love our Q&A sessions. We enjoy them. Oh, you know, for some reason, I'm not seeing the chat, Suzanne. Oh, how unusual. I don't know why. Okay. Um, how about you, so Lynette? Do you see it? Yeah. Yes. While you're looking well, for yeah, one. Okay. I've got one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Good. Well, you go ahead. Ask the question. Okay. If the ego, this is from Chris, if the ego plays a role in developing our personality traits, how can we still have personality traits on the other side? It's because we assume that we lose the ego as we cross over. The ego does, is, does serve as the conduit for our story. 
that as a soul, we bring certain traits and characteristics into this life, knowing we're going to work on challenges. For me, that would be patience. Uh, I'd like to know if it's not too personal when I finish this, Bev and Lynette, help me remember what you think your soul brought into this life to work on. <laughs> that might be too personal, but for, for, for me, it is patience for sure. And dealing with strong emotions, not running away from people's strong emotions, anger for one. And uh, so that's my soul's journey. But the, the, the ego is different than just the personality because we do take those personality traits back with us if we want to continue working on them. But most especially so that our loved ones who connect with us in a reading recognize us, right? So maybe we've moved on from being crabby or grumpy when we pass, but How's somebody across, you know, if your loved one's still here in physical form, how are they going to recognize you coming through a medium? If you show up all pleasant and you were always per a grumpy person, you just, you just bring on the story for the time of the reading and then you can show the medium. But my eyes have been open. I'm not Mr. Grumpy, Mrs. Grumpy anymore. <laughs> but meanwhile, <laughs> let me give a different definition to ego. A really wonderful way of picturing ego is that state of separation consciousness that we carry around with us, meaning you forget or choose to not choose to not honor the fact that we are all arising from the one light, from this field of pure connection, which is love. Why do you think we say God is love? There is no separation when we are in unity consciousness. We see the light in everyone and everything. And oh my God, is that a beautiful way to live? It's hard to hold that though, because we have this thing called ego that says, wait a minute, if you go around loving everyone, then my role is over here. So that's why ego jumps in and wants it to be all about me instead of we. And so we all could name when we're in separation consciousness. And that's when you say, wait a minute, that's my ego. That's my ego that makes me need to feel more important than other people. That's my ego that makes me judge people. But the gig is up ego. I know that's habit. I know that's conditioning. But I know now that when I tune into the soul within and I shine my light, I feel so much better than any of those ego habits that I thought were the real me. See, it's just beautiful. And so we can take the story of you, state your name, the Suzanne story, the Lynette story, the Bev story, back with us across the veil. And it comes alive when we connect with our loved ones who are still here. But we know when we cross the veil, uh, I am also first and foremost a soul that engendered that story. So you want to come clean and tell us what you think you came here to work on? Who wants to go first? I came here to work on forgiveness. Work on forgiveness. 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 Oh, wow. Got an echo here. I don't know who it's coming from. But so what you're saying is you've been given lots of opportunities to practice that, right? We don't need to go into it, but that's what we mean. When we recognize what are issues that at a soul, we said, I think I'll go work on this this time around. Yeah, it's because those issues and the opportunity to overcome our desire not to be forgiving or not to be patient comes up. Bev, how about you? Uh, looking back on many decades, I think, um, I know, one of my lessons was to recognize my own worth and to stop being the martyr. Oh, wow. To always, oh, wow. Um, and uh, lots of examples in each decade, but I think I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, and it doesn't mean that once we learn our lessons, then we we cross back over the veil. We get to hang around even if we complete our work because then when your lessons have learned and you and you realize that love is the answer and you apply these tools, huh, then we don't need to learn the painful way so much anymore, which is why I always pray and I hope many of you join me in this, may my lessons be as painless as possible. Yeah. Okay. No callers right now. That's a good thing. Bev, you have a question from somebody in our beautiful community. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I've said this before. There was something I wanted to bring up. 
and that's to invite all of you to our Channeling for Charity session I'm going to be doing April 30th. Mark your calendars. I don't have a slide to show you about this, but about three or four times a year, I channel my guide, Sanaya, live, online. Used to do it in person, but now we can reach people all over the world. Bev, how many people have signed up already? It's in the 500s or so? Or is it, or uh, we're, we're approaching 500. Right. Approaching 500. And this is the first time ever that my guides and I have told us in advance what they're going to talk about. It's going to be the main topic they will address from their perspective, from the higher realities perspective of why we deal with and how to deal with depression and mental illness. And I hope that doesn't sound like a depressing topic to all of you because I, for one, can't wait to hear what they say. They are absolutely, they've drawn the curtain. I have no idea what they're going to say. And, I, and I'm not asking them in advance because I listen while they're talking through me. It's kind of like a split consciousness thing going on and I can't wait to hear what they say. So to find out how to join us, go to my website. Let me see, let me see. I know I have a little banner here. Mm, here we go. Go to SuzanneGeesman.com and scroll down right under the funny video right at the top, and you'll see the highlighted events. Look for Channeling for Charity. And we're asking for a minimum contribution from everybody of just $15, but clearly people are digging deeper because 100% of the contributions, 100% will be going directly to the National Alliance for Mental Illness to support people who are dealing with these challenges. And so far, Bev, we're over $15,000, right? Yeah. Yes. So people yeah. are digging deep and it's a beautiful thing. And if you can't afford at all any contribution, we get that too. Just email uh, me through the contact page on the back and we'll get you in. We don't turn anybody away. Okay. Beautiful. Channeling for charity. April 30th, two o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday, Eastern time. All right, Bev, a question. Okay, I have the same identical question that came in weeks ago and is sitting on the screen. And um, one uses the word chaos, the other uses the word turmoil, but would like spirit's perspective on why there is so much chaos or turmoil in the United States right now with it, with shootings and, and violence. Okay, I know that that it's high on everybody's mind and, and it's probably why my guides have been speaking to me about this so much. So I don't want to just speak off the top of my head, but tune into them as I answer. And they say it's similar to the answer about labor pains, but it's really just growth pains. Now I had a wonderful talk with my guides earlier in the week and they said that human beings as a species are evolving as a group mind. Each of us has gone through our lives and we can see our growth. And we've grown through childhood and adolescence and thank God we survived that. And now we're into, we survived young adulthood. And most of you watching have probably gone through a few decades after that. The, that's the general uh, age bracket of our community. But uh, What's really something is that we grow individually, but we are also part of this species mind. And the guide said right now, as a species, humanity is in puberty. Okay. Ouch. Anybody remember how painful that is? Do you think it was chaotic? Do you think there was turmoil? Do you think we were trying to figure out who we were? And so I said, can you give me an exact age? And they said, more or less about 12 years old. And I said, I need evidence. And they said, you will see the number 12 everywhere. I'm telling you 12, 12 on my clock later that day, every, everywhere I look, 12s were popping up. And it makes sense, doesn't it? So, you know, not quite mature as a species, but individuals within the species mind of humanity who are awakening, who come to know we are all connected at the deeper levels. We're the ones that can help the evolution faster. So people don't like change and we're seeing a lot of change and it's growth pains. All righty. Good one. Lynette, how about you? 
and that's comforting. <laughs> So here's no, oh wait, let me just tell you why that is comforting to me. It's comforting because there's hope for us. We we yeah. will survive adolescence, hopefully, and, uh, as a species and continue growing. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Although I remember I seem to remember that the worst period was after the age of 12. <laughs> no, this it could 13, be. 14, Who says it's about then, to end right away? But yeah. that's why the more of the awakened souls who remember we're in here to use love as our preferred response to everything to see the oneness let your spirit soar is one of my online courses and soar stands for see the oneness open your heart acknowledge higher consciousness or attune to higher consciousness and reclaim your power which is not the ego separation consciousness power but the life force that flows through all of us when we can remember, then our spirits soar and we bring everybody else along in our wake. Okay. This is one on gratitude. And uh, Safina is asking whether it's more vibrationally powerful to be grateful for the challenges um, versus just plain, you know, sort of like consistent, low level grateful for everything. Okay. So uh, let me ask. The question changed at the very end when you said low level grateful for everything to maintain that state of gratitude is very, very challenging for us in human form because we're distracted by our physical senses that draw us outward. So certainly when you make a practice of being grateful on purpose in the moment and feeling what comes up as you think grateful thoughts, you think appreciation and then send that outwards absolutely that's super powerful but how wonderful if we walked around in a state of gratitude all the time it would change our world because that causes us to be looking for other things that we're grateful for instead of focusing on the negative which is such a toxic way to live our lives if we just become aware that yes we need to pay attention when things are possibly a threat to us that's fine but when we can focus on the positive and then feel the gratitude that changes everything i grabbed another caller as they were on their way in hey hey, hey you're on the line you're on the air welcome hello yes hello, hello. the one that just said hello what's your first name Sophia Rodriguez. Oh, well, there's first and last name. Hi, Sophia. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I am shocked and honored. And um, I want to say I am forever grateful for you and Tanaya and your waking way messages. They have changed my life. I'm so glad. Let, let me, let me, while you're talking, Sophia, pop up on the screen a slide with the Awaken Way app. Do you have the app? I do. Okay. Yes. All right. You and 21,000 other people seem to be enjoying it very much. So everybody, if you don't know about this app, go to your app store and get it because it's daily inspiration, daily high vibes, really gets you yes. focused I on what matters. I feel like they're talking directly to me. Well, they are. That's the thing. Because <laughs> we are yeah. all connected. Very nice. Okay. So, Sophia, you have a question? Yes. I do have a question. Okay. Um, my question is, could, can a loved one who died reincarnate into another body and come back to their partner? So. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I just got my lip twitch first time in the show and I see a thumbs up. The guides say it can happen. Wow. Wow. Okay. So please understand what's really interesting about that is that I know as a medium, and I've asked my guides this many times, so what happens if a medium then were to sit, let's say that happened to you, Sophia. Let's say your partner passed, and then five years or so later, that would have to be like a walk-in, because they would come back. Oh, 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 wait, wait, Sanaya just said, you are assuming that they're coming back as a partner but they could come back to their partner in another form. Okay. So not, That's did you I say mean. as a partner? Oh yeah. That they come, they would come back as like a grandchild or somebody that's in your life, but not as your 
partner, partner. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. So you would recognize them in another form, human form, not as a pet, but not at the same age. Okay. Okay. A different, I, you know, uh, just to be a little bit clear, because I had two different partners and they both are on the other side of the veil. And I just feel like sometimes I don't want to say one name and not the other. That was my thing when I'm uh, praying and I'm, uh. I'm talking. Well, you know, we love people with all our hearts, but we somehow can love them in different ways. And mm -hmm. they would know that across the veil that you don't have to worry about favoring one over the other or will the other one be jealous? It's not like that across the veil at all. Love just is is this the most beautiful vibration and it's received and appreciated. And there's no sense of disloyalty to the soul. Well, that's beautiful because okay. I feel you know, and I, um, my vibration is very high and I'm feeling things, you know, things have it's been beautiful. Beautiful, you've been, indeed. You've been a great help. And w thank you. What I was starting to say, though, when they set me straight there is um, that if I as a medium were to sit with you and one ha somebody had reincarnated as a younger family member now, I would still be able to tune into the partner across the veil because it's not all or nothing. They don't completely become that new person the soul is much greater than one incarnation does that make yes. sense yes yeah. i've learned that that's yeah. pretty amazing yeah it's very cool yes. all right well thank you for calling i'm glad you got through thank you all right you god bless you too bye bye oh well, we love doing these shows don't we while i'm pulling up slides let me show that slide that popped up here before here we go do y'all know about the Alaska cruise? Bev and Lynette and I were just making our hotel arrangements for arriving the night before so that we're in Seattle, bright and early, ready to go aboard the ship, Seattle to Alaska and back, August 12th to 19th. And there are still berths available. I have never cruised to Alaska. My husband actually served on a cruise ship to Alaska and he knows that I'm going to love being back there. But what I'm going to love the most is our beautiful community that is able to join us. We're going to have 14 hours on these eight days and seven nights together in the big theater and in a couple parties and see each other just out and about the ship all week long. And it's just going to be magical. We're calling it the Awaken Way Cruise because I'll be sharing how to live this consciously connected with your loved ones who have passed and with your guides and angels life and how to be divinely guided moment by moment. So I'm super excited. I've led retreats in the past that were most at the most four days long, but to be together for eight days in that kind of setting. Amazing. So if you're interested in that again, see the highlighted events on my homepage at SuzanneGeesman.com. All righty. How about some more questions? Who wants to go next? Do you have one, Bev? I've mm -hmm. got one if you don't right now. There's so go many ahead, good ones. Lynette. Yeah. Okay. In the awakened way, what is the role of worship? My religious tradition is rich in worship of Jesus, but how does spirit, who was once man, as Jesus, wish us to relate to him? Oh my goodness. So I was raised without any religion and now I have this relationship with Jesus that just has opened my heart so much to the awareness that we can connect with any of the masters. He has said to me to tell everyone he does not want to be put on a pedestal. He wants to be considered your best friend. And if he can be a teacher, that is a beautiful thing. They absolutely do not want to be worshipped. They want us to all know that Love extends to all of us equally. In fact, I don't think I've ever showed this. Right here on my desk is this picture that reminds me of a time when Jesus showed up in my meditations, surprised the heck out of me, and was kneeling in front of me and took my feet in his hands as if to wash them. I had asked him the simple question, how do I deal with this this one person who's really, I don't resonate with, and they're kind of getting on my nerves. And I was upset at myself because I had acted less than lovingly the last time I saw them. 
and I just as spirit in general, this question, and here appears before me, Jesus holding my feet in his hands. And I had never read this story in the Bible, but you hear the stories as told by others. And I knew the story of Jesus washing someone's feet and I burst into tears. He didn't need to say a word. The message was so clear. You know, I, I can wash your feet. If I can wash your feet, will you, can you love everyone the way I love all of you? And so I found the picture of that moment on the internet and I printed it out and I put here under it, all are special. All are special as a reminder to me to never let that separation consciousness of the ego take over. That's just, that's the illusion that we're separate and that we're special or need to be special over each other. There's no need when you feel that love that comes from the masters for us, that comes from your soul to you, if you'll only let it out. So yes, each of us is unique, but in the words of Jesus and the masters and spirit itself, all are special because we are the expression of spirit itself. Wow. Oh, good one, Lynette. I didn't know it's that was four, coming 44. up. Or it was when you just finished that answer. It was 444. Yay. 444. Four, four. <laughs> I'll take that beautiful angel number. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That was wow. me. I, I know that so many of you know these things. And you certainly already know it in your hearts. Your soul knows it. And so if anything I say ever gets you teared up, people say, why do I feel like crying when Sanaya talks? That kind of thing. That's the soul saying, oh, I'm so happy you're here. There's the goosebumps. Are you listening? You're listening. We're so grateful you're on this path. So we're grateful you're joining us. Thank you. Bev. It didn't matter which one of us went next because I had the same exact question. No way. <laughs> ready to ask. <laughs> so, but here, here's another one. Um, do our guides and our loved ones on the other side know each other? Do they compare notes when we're given advice? Our guides and our loved ones. Guides and our loved ones. Okay. So like our loved ones in family form who have past do they know our guides do they compare notes that is such a great question <laughs> and the guides say right now more than you know although it's actually happening at night when we're sleeping and we're part of the party isn't that interesting yeah uh there's oh it's so funny there's no judgment no competition they just love us to pieces the guides say it's a joyous time together and they're doing their best for that awareness that we're all connected and we have guides to get into our awareness here. I'm going to be sharing in the next monthly connection webinar. What is it? May 9th. There it is on the screen. Uh, an amazing lesson I had from my guide in the last month during my conversations with joy and meditation where my guide had me uh, experience him in a wholly new way with so much love and gave us a technique to experience that love that's within us for ourselves in a beautiful way. And it's just a technique that I've been using and practicing all month to make sure that this is a, a really great tool to share with everyone. So I hope you can join me for that. Yeah, we'll all be there. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take a call girls, okay? Somebody in California is on the line. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm excited. Great. What's your first name? Gail. Gail, welcome. If you can turn your speakers off, we can hear the lag in the. Oh, yep. And your dog. <laughs> Hi, Gail. How can we help you today? Um, I have a question concerning reincarnation. Okay. I had spoken to, uh, not spoken, I listened to a podcast with the gentleman who said that there was no such thing as everything happened at one time and that um, reincarnation couldn't happen because everything was all happening at the same moment. I need to stop you there before, because I can only, when I get a little spacey tuning in, I can only hold one thing, one thought at a time. So if there's part two, hold on to that. But what I'm getting right now is that person would be correct if there were only one reality. He's seeing things from the greater reality outside time and space where indeed we've been told everything happens at once. 
but we are here in this reality where reincarnation is a part of this reality, which actually gives meaning to our lives here because we know it's not one and done. We get a chance to grow from, from what we learn and the choices we make, make. So we are both spirit and human. At one level, everything's happening at once, but at this level, we sure do come back around again. And the evidence when you dive into it is just beyond any refuting. So was there more to the question? No, that's huh. what my soul was telling me. And it was confusing. And I just wanted to know what the guys thought. <laughs> well, that was great. you know how people say, listen to your mother. I'm going to say, listen to your soul. Because <laughs> that is your most reliable source, no matter what I say, no matter what anybody says. Trust that feeling in your heart, that knowing that's the soul. Okay. And thank you for helping open my soul. Thank you very much. Oh, well, you had to answer the call. So you're welcome. <laughs> All right. You yeah. take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Hmm. Nice. There was something else I was going to announce. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, I know. I know. I'm so excited because within the next few days, we're going to unveil a whole new menu on my website. It, it's been really hard for people to find things like the monthly connection and upcoming uh, events and all of the resources, many of them free that are on my website. Over 50% of my resources are free. I'm grateful for that. And so with the wonderful help of our team member, Jay Yesh, he has totally redone it and he's just getting ready to put it up there. We've been testing it out and I'm so excited. So if you're not on my email list, you won't hear about it. So go to the homepage, scroll down a little and a pop-up will come up. You can sign up for notifications of all the new goodies that we're always putting out. New videos. If you want new videos, we do these all the time. Click subscribe on my YouTube channel and click the bell so you get a notice when we go live. You can also sign up to know when we're going to do these live podcasts, which are not always predictable. Sometimes they're every Thursday. Sometimes they're every other Tuesday. I just follow the nudges. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. How are we doing? We have time for a few more questions. Bev, you have one? Or did you just ask uh, one? Yeah. Lynette? I think I did. But yeah. I bet Bev has one though, because <laughs> we had the same question just a minute ago. <laughs> this one's short and sweet. Okay. Is it our soul that shapes our human experiences or is it our human experience that shapes our souls? Oh, wow. Okay, good one. And the guides show me a dance and a flow that that again, that's human thinking that thinks it has to be one way or the other. It's They're showing me a constant feedback loop. Isn't that cool? So you're always being guided by your soul, but yet your free will choices change the evolution of the soul. So learn to tune into the soul using a lot of the tools that I teach, right? And many others and be even more guided to greater and greater joyous moments. I mean, I want to bring uh, Bev and Lynette back on here. We might finish a little early because this would be just a great, great conversation to have right now that all three of us have known tragedy. Uh, I, we're, we come on here and we, we joke around and we laugh a lot and we totally, totally understand that many of you have been drawn to, to my work and this team because of a tragedy in your own life. And we value that, we honor it, and we respect it. But we also hope to model that because of living the awakened way, we can smile again and we find joy again. And it's not that our lives are perfect. Lynette uh, is there, like she said, with a beloved loved one who's in the hospice right now in the house where she is. And we could feel her, her grief before mm -hmm. we started. And yet we prayed together beforehand. We, we tuned in the spirit. We we did what we call rising above, not ignoring the challenge, but seeing it from the soul's perspective. And that changes everything. So I just love if both of you would just comment a little bit about your journey and how it's brought you to a new understanding of, of who we are and how you found joy again. Bev, go first. I think Lynette go first. Was first. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, I've uh, had all the, the ups and downs that everyone does in my life, but, but the biggest tragedy for me was uh, my, my 
beloved uh, soulmate and husband, Dennis, dying in front of me at the breakfast table when he was 51. So totally unexpected. My whole life changed in a, in a literally a, a split second. And um, at that point in my life, I, I had enough knowing that I knew he was fine. We were devastated, bad, left behind. And, um, but I knew he was okay and that, that he was fine and that kept me going. But um, some 20 years later, I know so much more from t many teachers, especially Suzanne. And it, um, you know, it, it allows me joy in my life again. I can, I can smile at the memories. We never forget. Life is never the, the, the same. It's a new normal, but it has joy in, in there again. Uh, just in November, I lost a best, best, well, we don't use the word lost, but my it's best It's hard, isn't it? It's just programmed in the vocabulary. Yeah. And a good friend of Suzanne's also. And, you know, she was my sidekick. She was the friend I could call up and say, I need to get off the computer. Let's go get a hot fudge sundae. And she'd be ready. And I miss her. You know, I still think, oh, I've got to tell that to Donna. I've got to call Donna. Um, and yet I can I can just I can go to gratitude and enjoy for having her in my life. I just sensed I her best. She held up ice Did cream you? and said, let's go to Culver's. <laughs> Donna. That's <laughs> nice. her. <laughs> nice. That's her. Uh, so it it gives you such strength and 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 peace and you can get back to to center when you when you know these things i know bev i laugh okay, at you when you you uh often encounter people who haven't learned these truths yet and maybe they're uh, a place where you used to live they're a little wrapped up in the gossip and that mm -hmm. separation consciousness ego we were talking about and she, she'll she'll text me everybody and she'll say suzanne I had to get up in my hot air balloon and go really high above this time, <laughs> rising above the drama. And it, it requires conscious living. That's what the awakened way is. Thank you. That's beautiful. Lynette. That reminds me of that, of a, a debate we used to have in my widow's group about, you know, sudden death versus lingering and which is, and there, there is no, there's nothing that's good, but, you know, having had a lingering, long and then ultimately a husband who was uh died because of medical neglect um you know sudden looks kind of good but then everything looks better when you don't have it a lot of losses yeah i mean they started when i was 12 and then there was a hiatus and in the last 20 years or so i was trying to count i can't even count it's like 15 or 16 but my most important people have died in the last uh 12 to 13 years and the miracle for me was coming to know that they are not dead. They're not dead, they're still here. And that was like this foundation, like a solid foundation to build this awakening on. And and that has just changed everything. And I wasn't a stranger to these concepts. You know, I've heard about this stuff. I've meditated, I've done a lot of work over the last 30 or 40 years even. And there's something about that missing piece of knowing that they continue. Because for one thing, it, it got rid of entirely of my own fear of death and anxiety about judgment and all that stuff that I learned in church. And it just, it's just been transformational. And flying, you didn't fly on a jet for 30 years. You didn't have much needed surgery because you were so afraid of death. Everybody, when I met Lynette, she permanently used crutches, the kind you have on your wrist. She was the crippled lady. Now she goes hiking every day. She had the surgery because she was just totally lost her fear of dying. And all thanks to mediumship, right? Yes. Finding out firsthand your loved ones are here. Yeah. And and I mean, I was afraid of talking about death, of thinking about it, any of that. And I've now been trained as a death doula. So a death you know. doula to help <laughs> other people with the labor pains, right? Yeah, the labor pains. Yeah. Wow. Just well. am amazing to me. So grateful. Grateful. I am grateful. That's I'll it. Leave Let it with that. So leave. grateful. There we go. We ended with the gratitude. <laughs> Well, I am grateful to this beautiful team of assistants I have. We don't want to leave out Valerie, who helps field all of your lovely emails and answers them so much from the heart if I can't get to all of them. Uh, and so 
and Mike Tai, who supports us in this work. Spirit really knows what they're doing when they, they surround us with people to help us and surround us with this beautiful community. Thank you all for being on this journey with us. We hope we have inspired you today. Perfect hour together. We all love you so much. And we hope that you will join us the next time we gather. I know I have some exciting guests coming up. I'm a blank right now, but if you're on that email list, you'll hear all about it. So thank you all for joining us. And one last wave from the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, girls. And we hope to see you back here again soon. We love you.